Removing the deadly leaven, the Pharisee in us all. Pharisee. This word immediately invokes a sense of repulsion amongst Christians. Yehoshua throughout the New Testament had more conflict with the Pharisees than any other group of people. Why though? What was at the heart of these conflicts? While we often think of Pharisees as an antiquated people group consigned to ancient Palestine, the truth is that Phariseeism is alive and well. In fact, it is thriving in the hearts of many of Yahushua's own followers. The spirit of Phariseeism is not restricted by age, gender or vocation. It can reside in the hearts of both the young and the old. It can reside in the hearts of both men and women. None, no matter their title or position, are exempt from its evil influence. Are you a Pharisee? We encourage you to take the time to prayerfully consider each of the following points. In our preparation for Yehoshua's soon return, it is imperative that we daily examine our practices, our professions, our thought lives, and the true condition of our hearts in Yahuwah's sight. Let us always be vigilant in our pursuit of holiness that we may, by the Father's grace, be found blameless on that great day. Then Yahushua said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Matthew 16 verse 6 A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Galatians 5 verse 9 17 Characteristics of a Pharisee 1. A Pharisee glories in his connection to pious men, but does not have a personal or living connection with Yahuwah. Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that Yahuwah is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Matthew 3 verses 7 to 9 Make no mistake, Yahuwah saves us as individuals. None will be saved by their earthly affiliation with another. Are you boastful of your relationship to someone else? Are you allowing your relationship with a parent, spouse, friend, teacher or pastor to influence your beliefs and practices? rather than searching the scriptures for yourself to learn what is true? 2. A Pharisee is an accuser and assumes the worst of others. Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Matthew 12, verse 24. Do you always give people the benefit of the doubt? Or do you assume the worst? 3. A Pharisee is easily offended. Then his disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Matthew 15 verses 12 to 13. Does self allow you to be easily offended? Love is not easily provoked. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5 4. A Pharisee exalts outward signs above the testimony of Scripture. He demands an outward sign as proof of inspiration rather than searching the Scriptures for truth. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. Matthew 16 verse 1 Those who trust their outward senses to the exclusion of Scripture's testimony will be deceived by the lying wonders soon to be manifested in these last days. Are you daily studying the Scriptures to prepare yourself for the days ahead? 5. A Pharisee is a hypocrite. He says, but does not do. For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Matthew 23, verse 4. 
Are you a different person with your religious friends than you are with your worldly friends? Do you cater to the crowd? Or are you a committed follower of Yahushua at all times, in all circumstances, in all places, and in the company of all men? 6. A Pharisee is ostentatious and seeks to be honoured by men. He is more concerned with what men think than what Yahuwah thinks. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Matthew 23 verse 5 Are you clinging to unbiblical practices or neglecting to render complete obedience to Yahuwah because you are concerned about what others think? Are you more concerned about what your friends, your spouse, your parents, your teacher, or your congregation thinks than you are about what your Father in Heaven thinks? 7. A Pharisee covets exalted positions and places of honour. They love the best places at feasts, the best seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplaces, and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Matthew 23, verses 6 to 7. Do you covet the title of pastor, teacher, preacher, priest, leader, donor, etc.? Do you demand recognition for your contributions to Yahuwah's cause? Do you delight to see your name or picture in headlines and bibliographies? 8. A Pharisee corrupts others. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like graves which have not seen, and the men who walk over them are not aware of them. Luke 11 verse 44 Are you unwavering in your commitment to Yahuwah and to the pursuit of His righteousness? Or do you inadvertently muddle others' perceptions of Yahuwah's standards through an example of lukewarm behavior? 9. A Pharisee makes people feel they are born again when they are not. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Matthew 23, verse 15 Do you tell people that they are bound for heaven when they are yet unrepentant? We must preach the gospel in its entirety if we are to have true conversions. Two things we must do to be saved. One, repent and turn away from all sin. Two, trust in Yahushua and the merits of his sacrifice. Once a person understands the fearful consequences of transgressing Yahuwah's law, the Ten Commandments, they will abhor sin and cling to the Savior. Thus, we must give people a right understanding of Yahuwah's law if we are to have true conversions. Many today are being led astray by the modern pseudo-gospel. Are you sharing the fullness of the gospel message? 10. A Pharisee will twist the scriptures to agree with his desired interpretation. Yahushua answered and said to them, why do you also transgress the commandment of Yahuwah because of your tradition? For Yahuwah commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to Yahuwah, then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of Yahuwah of no effect by your tradition. Matthew 15, 3-6 And the Father himself, who sent me, has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. But you do not have his word abiding in you, because whom he sent, him you do not believe. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me but you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. John 5, verses 37 to 40. Do you accept scripture for what it says, or do you seek an interpretation that agrees with your presuppositions and traditions? 
11. A Pharisee is more concerned with his outward appearance than with the condition of his heart. He is diligent to maintain a righteous facade, while on the inside his heart is dark and deceitful. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Matthew 23 verses 25 to 26 Are you the same person in public that you are when you are alone? Is it your custom to do right even when no one is looking? 12. A Pharisee is self-righteous and supposes that he would never make the mistakes he claims others have made. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous and say, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Matthew 23 verses 29 to 30 Do you judge others' mistakes by saying, I would never have done that? Do you presumptuously boast that your judgment is superior to another's? 13. A Pharisee trusts in his own works. Also, Yahushua spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, Yahuwah, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, Yahuwah, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Luke 18 verses 9 to 14 do you suppose in your heart that feast-keeping, Sabbath observance, abstaining from unclean foods, etc. will get you into heaven? We are saved by faith, not by works. It is Yahushua's sacrifice alone that provides atonement, and our only hope of righteousness is imputed righteousness. There is nothing we could ever do to add to what He has done. To add our works to His sacrifice would only pollute the altar. But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. Isaiah 64 verse 6 Our works are the fruit, not the root. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of Yahuwah, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 14. A Pharisee derides those who will not listen to them. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give Yahuwah the glory, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, I can now see. Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that Yahuwah spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, If this man were not from Yahuwah, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, you were completely born in sins, and are you teaching us? And they cast him out. John 9 verses 24 to 34 Do you hold in contempt those who do not agree with all of your interpretations of Scripture?
Do you deride those who do not see everything the way that you do? 15. A Pharisee is a soul destroyer, not a soul winner. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Matthew 23, verse 13. Are you actively seeking to win souls, or are you leading people astray? Are you living and sharing the fullness of heaven's message for humanity? 16. A Pharisee values tradition more than Yahuwah's word. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, for it is written, This people honours me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of Yahuwah, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things you do. And he said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of Yahuwah, that you may keep your tradition. Mark 7 verses 5 to 9. Are you willing to discard every doctrine and practice that does not agree with Scripture, regardless of its age or popularity? Would you step free of error and go it alone if none of your friends or family went with you? Tradition is a major stumbling block for many, as they prefer unification by error rather than division by truth. Today, many professed Christians are clinging to Christmas, Easter, and Sunday or Saturday worship not because it is biblical, but because they cherish their traditions more than the word of Yahuwah. 17. A Pharisee justifies himself before men. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but Yahuwah knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of Yahuwah. Luke 16 verses 14 to 15. A truly converted individual will always justify Yahuwah and agree with Scripture's declaration of his true condition. A truly converted individual will humbly acknowledge their faults and will own up to their mistakes. Yahuwah resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. James 4 verse 6 Do you humbly acknowledge your shortcomings? Or do you lash out at those who offer you criticism? Do you admit your mistakes? Or do you seek to shift the blame to others? Do you concede that you are spiritually bankrupt and in need of a saviour? Or do you seek to justify yourself? So, how did you fare? Did you see yourself in any of these points? If not, we humbly encourage you to refer back to point 17. Let us all, by Yahuwah's empowering grace, repent of every pharisaical attitude and attribute, that we may be washed clean of this spiritual leprosy, and that we may eradicate every trace of the pharisaical leaven from our hearts. Those who are of a perverse heart are an abomination to Yahuwah, but the blameless in their ways are his delight. Proverbs 11 verse 20 Now may the Eloah of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our master Yahushua the Anointed. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23